Thank you. Thanks a lot. And uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I'm really uh, appreciate, appreciate this opportunity to uh, to talk today about the current uh, situation in Belarus and what can be done to resolve this political and humanitarian crisis in our country. Uh, Shapley, three days ago, uh, Belarusians celebrated, like celebrated, uh, a year since um, uh, since we voted for democratic changes in uh, uh, our country in 2020 presidential uh, election campaign. But the Belarusian dictatorial regime refused uh, the will of the people and answered uh, with the violence. But Belarusians uh, are not giving up and they continue till now uh, their peaceful resistance. And uh, this way towards a new Belarus uh, turned out to be longer and uh, harder than many of us expected. Uh, our nation uh, has already paid uh, and continues to pay a very high price for uh, the decision to finally become um, uh, free and democratic. But we neither stopped nor uh, turned back. And today, uh, despite all the losses, uh, all the sufferings, we are closer to our to our goal as never before. And uh, these days we reflect on what uh, happened to us during the last year. We analyze uh, our mistakes, we uh, coordinate our actions, and we get back uh, to work. One of the important things that uh, keep Belarusians uh, going is unprecedented support from international community. And today I would like uh, to uh, say thank you to Norway and Norwegians on behalf of all Belarusian people uh, for what you have done uh, uh, during last year. Norway uh, didn't recognize, um, uh, didn't recognize uh, election as uh, fair and didn't recognize Lukashenko as legitimate uh, president. And we welcome Norway's uh, vocal position on violence and repressions on Belarus. And uh, we really value your long term and uh, generous support for civil society, human rights defenders, uh, media, and uh, political prisoners, their families. And we uh, also remember that Norway was uh, among the uh, participating um, states invoking the Moscow mechanism uh, regarding Belarus, that uh, you were among countries initiating a area formula meeting at the UN Security Council and uh, International Accountability Platform. Uh, I will now proceed uh, with the four main points. Uh, the pressure on the regime uh, through sanctions, the assistance to Belarusian uh, civil society, the investigation of human rights uh, violation in Belarus, and general strategy to uh, overcome this ongoing crisis. Uh, sectoral sanctions against the regime became a reality when uh, Lukashenko started to threaten not only citizens of our country, but uh, uh, also the international community by hijacking the Ryanair flight and uh, creating a migrant crisis on the borders with Lithuania, Latvia, and Poland. And these uh, sanctions have already uh, had the effect, but uh, the regime is learning to evade them uh, through multiple loopholes uh, that are left after the sanctions. And Norway could really help to close those loopholes, uh, especially when, when it comes to potash industry. Uh, because uh, of the special role that the Norwegian um, enterprise Yara uh, plays in uh, trade with Belarus. And uh, why, while the external and internal pressure on uh, the regime is crucial, it's important not to forget that uh, Belarus is more than on Lukashenko's regime and that uh, civil society will be there when the regime is gone. Therefore, uh, the assistance for Belarusian society is not only helping those who need it right now, but also investing um, uh, you know, into the future, into new Belarus. And it is maybe most uh, evident when it comes to students and academics, uh, many of whom were forced to leave the country uh, this last, uh, since for during last past months. And I hope that Norwegian universities will be able to offer uh, an opportunity to continue uh, their studies and their researches, uh, including a distance form. Uh, so, uh, you know, our students could stay in Belarus if they wish. 
So I uh, and of course I also call on your support in um, uh, independent Belarusian academic institutions such as uh, European Humanitarian University. And uh, one of the most urgent need is uh, perhaps uh, your support for civic initiatives, uh, political prisoners and the independent media. As of today, there are more than 600 recognized political prisoners and many uh, of the national and uh, regional media outlets <coughs> are under extreme pressure as the regime uh, detains uh, their reporters, uh, blocks, uh, blocks their um, platforms and uh, forces whole team and newsrooms uh, to leave the country and walk from outside Belarus. And uh, the next crucial step is uh, bringing the illegitimate uh, regime to accountability. As the member of the United Nations Security Council, Norway can play <coughs> important role in establishing an international investigation and preparation for the tribunal on the regime for the violation of human rights and tortures in Belarus. The regime should also uh, be held responsible for the attack on the uh, Athens Vilnius airplane and uh, migrants crisis um, and migrants uh, crisis uh, on the borders of uh, other countries and we usually call it migrant smuggling. And finally, I would like to repeat that our vision of how the crisis in Belarus will end uh, hasn't changed since since last year. We believe that uh, the only way out, out of uh, this crisis is through release and rehabilitation of all political prisoners and new free and fair democratic elections with uh, uh, international uh, observation. And we expect that uh, this process will begin this year uh, with inclusive uh, negotiations and uh, mediation uh, of uh, other countries. And uh, thank you for your attention. This is my introduction remarks. We are open for discussion. Thank you.